But he was starting to feel like he was getting the hang of this. There was a way through to victory. He could feel it. He just had to keep running the path of destinies. With that, the book fluttered back to the beginning, and he fell into it. The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong, but he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renato. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. But could Renato really leave an old friend to the Ravens? Ah, Lapino. Apparently, the mad rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lapino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. Lapino's frantic message said that the Ravens were going to kill him for being a rebel spy. And that he had a clever plan. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Or so Lapino had told him over the far speaker anyway. Lapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had, had everybody fled the ravens? Renato had been here, at this exact place, at this exact time. This time, there were so many more ravens. Renato looked around the empty village and reflected. The Sky Ripper had turned out to be far too dangerous to be used. Time to turn to what he knew best.
wasn't his fault. They look so breakable. back to him. He wondered what he'd remember next. Way better than being able to shrink down to the size of an ant. What was that all about anyway? Pino would betray him, but now Renato knew that. What would Lapino do if he knew that Lapino was going to betray him? Well, he'd concoct some crazy scheme, wouldn't he? That used Lapino's betrayal against him and it would blow up in his face. Uh, yeah. Maybe he was overthinking this. Well, that would be a first. Bernardo checked for a false compartment. Nope. Bloody, Renato finally reached Lapino. 
The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Bernardo recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we see this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We capture Zenobia, we find out what she knows, and that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who also happened to be a deadly sorcerer and, oh, his only daughter? That would be worth it. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. They'd been close. She'd told him things no one else knew. But she'd never told him who she really was. She knows all the Emperor's plans, chuckled the master spy. She won't give them up easily. <laughs> She'll tell the interrogators, all right said Lapino. Taking her would change the game all right. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Bernardo at hot potato. Renato hated gogglers, but it freaked him out to cut them. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lapino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lapino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong, thought Renardo.
Oh, this is going to be fun, said Lapino, as he ran to go set up his marvelous plan. Ooh, 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 a workbench. Did he have any jewels he hadn't tried out? He had. Follow my nose, thought Bernardo. Bernardo had heard stories of a dungeon where chests were filled with potions and weapons. Fairy tales. Ricardo felt dubious about the whole plan. With every step, he was waiting for it all to go horribly wrong. But against all odds, Lapino's idiotic plan worked. Zenobia's ravens ran off after the geese, the net dropped, and Renato jumped out of the watermelon and put his sword to Zenobia's throat. Renato, she said, are those new scars? They look good on you. You never return my velvet jacket. It was my favorite. You look stupid in velvet. Ah, oh, what does an imperial princess know about style? Oh, get a room, you two, said Latino. But the fleet was coming on fast, so they put Zenobia on the Farfarer and took her east over the Nexus. She'd vanished from Swordfu School, from his life, without even saying goodbye, without ever telling him she was the Emperor's adopted daughter. Ah, Lapina was right, Renato thought reluctantly. She knows things. She recognized his look. You're taking me to the interrogators, aren't you? She said, wide-eyed. And then she jumped, with horror. Renato saw Zenobia plummeting. Then he saw the Nexus below them. Cats always land on their feet. Ah, oh, she'll head for the Imperial outpost, yelled the Pino. You have to catch her.
Cats can run faster, but foxes can run longer. If he ran, he could head her off before she reached her minions at the outpost. Well, he did love a good chase. He wished there were more pylons he could use the hook on. They really needed to construct additional pylons. with the materials he had. Renato had a pretty good idea, actually. Now I find out what's next, he thought. contained a Vorpal sword. I'm just kidding. Vorpal swords don't exist. <sighs> he was closing on her. He could smell her fear. He tried not to think about the interrogators at the secret base. What did they do to her? Maybe it didn't have to end that way. Maybe he could talk to her. But after all, there were worse things the Imperials had done to friends of his. Smashing things was fun.
Renato reached the outpost. The Imperials there were no match for him. Soon after, Zenobia limped up the path. When she realized he was already in front of her, she didn't even try to run. Oh, you left without saying goodbye. Again, he said, please. I'm enjoying this a little too much. She said, shaken. Oh, spare us the chit-chat, would you? Said Lapino as he shackled her hands so she couldn't throw spells. She knows all his plans. All the way back to the Farfarer, Lapino nagged Renato about how the interrogators would pry all the intel out of Zenobia. How that would turn the tides in the imminent battle. All they had to do was take her to the Rebel's secret base. Renato didn't like to think about what the interrogators would do to her. Couldn't he just talk to her? could see the fear in Zenobia's eyes. I can't take it to those creatures at the base. He whispered to Lupino. Ah, you've gone soft. Soft in the head. We captured her for what she knows. I'll take it to the mountains. Tell all the horrible things the Emperor's done. Yeah, believe me, she'll turn. And he turned the wheel. The hell you will, shouted Lupino, and he grabbed the wheel back from him. The two of them wrestled for control of the ship. It shot off like a mad sparrow. Suddenly, Renato was falling. When he came to, Zenobia was standing over him. Why didn't you take me to the base to be interrogated? She demanded. Do you know what's left of people they interrogate? This is some trick, isn't it? To make me fall for you again. Well, I won't. Oh, go on then. Scurry back to your ravens. I can't stop you. But strangely, she didn't. As Renato set off to find the Farfarer, she followed him, keeping just out of sight of the ravens. I have what I need to craft any weapon, thought Renato, as long as it's a sword. God, it's full of stars. he was creating employment for. Truly, he was a job creator. been open before.
what was really fun was hooking yourself onto a moving ship. Imagine if you built a house on one of these things. It would be amazing. It would be like having a boat. Astronado stopped to sniff the wind. Zenobia came up, still mad. Did you really think you'd just talk me into betraying my father? Oh yeah, sure, that was exactly my plan. Then why aren't you even talking to me? Because I've never talked you into anything in my life. They're gonna court-martial you for letting me go. He caught a whiff of the Farfarer. Wet rope, tar, and a cask of Scoble ale he'd spilt last year. It was that way.
Renata wondered if he should have taken Zenobia to the rebel base for real. Maybe she wasn't playing him after all. After the bleak talk about the Emperor's dark secrets, he was regretting his suspicion. The Farfarer had crashed in some rocks. There was no sign of Lupino. Zenobia caught up. All that kid stuff in sword food school. Look, you know, look, that's the past. We, we, we're adults now. We, we have duties to other people. We have destinies. What are you talking about? And you are the most arrogant, slow-witted, light-fingered, mercenary, moral, reckless, Run away with me, said Renardo, and he realized he meant it. Well, just like that, she demanded. I will, if you will. So she kissed him. And it was the best kiss he'd ever had. They held hands as they boarded the farfare. Renardo felt light-hearted, like the winds that were playing the rigging like a balalaika. But Lapino, I need to go back to Lapino, he said, suddenly realizing. He could have been captured. A prisoner. He's not. How'd you know? He saw something in her eyes he didn't understand. He fell, didn't he? Into the abyss. She looked away. Wouldn't answer. But then a bolt smashed through the Farfarer's keel. The broken ship plummeted out of the clouds. Renato picked himself off the deck. They were alive. We have to get to my private ship, she said. Do you trust me? I guess I must, he said. You go on ahead. Clear the path, she said. I can't kill my own soldiers. He wanted to say that he didn't trust her, but he had no idea what he was getting into. But he had no choice, did he? He was following his heart. That's what it means to be a hero. You had to follow your heart. I wish I could do that. easier to fight inanimate objects.
Take a leap of faith, said the inscription. their breath. It was strange to be so close to her. What are you thinking? He asked. I'm trying very hard not to think. Me too, he said. Up ahead, he could see the thin silver of Zenobia's personal ship. It looked fast. They would leave all this behind. Once you try it, you're hooked. that he didn't feel more pain. Just a bit... Uh, dizzy. Whew.
As they reached her ship, Renato suddenly felt a sharp pain in his stomach. He was surprised to see a crossbow bolt sticking out of it. I was going to lead the Empire to a secret base, said Lapino. But no, you had to screw up my plan because you still got a thing for her. Renato stared at Zenobia. The kiss, was it real? She said, with a look of indescribable sorrow. She gestured and said an arcane word, and Lapino went flying into the abyss, screaming, I'm telling your father! Then she knelt down to cradle his head, and her paws felt very soft and warm. And he hadn't learned anything new this time. He'd done the same thing twice, yet expected a different outcome. <laughs>